so sorry we're running a bit late. We're going to try and finish a bit earlier so we don't overrun too much on the other side. Um, so my name's Holly. I'm part of the Radical Housing Network. Um, and this session is about organising and action around the housing crisis. Um, so we'll be talking a bit about the different tactics that groups use. Um, and then we'll be uh, talking about linking up, um, so sharing sharing our tactics. And, and the session, so we've got Eileen from Defend Capital Housing. We've got Bill from Landless Housing Exit. We've got Tom from Southwark Tenants, and we've got Carolyn from Scottish Legal Network. Um, and, and they'll each introduce um, what their, their tactics are. And then we'll go out to the audience and, and anyone who's involved in groups and um, using tactics can, can shout out. And then we're going to uh, have a breakaway session to talk about how to link up more. And then we'll come together again. Okay, so can we start with again? Oh, okay, all right. Um, I'm from uh, Defend Council Housing. It's a campaign that was set up in 1997 to fight against privatisation of council housing. It started in Hackney actually, but um, it became national. Um, and tenants have four and won some really big battles. So that not all of council housing in Birmingham, for example, was up to being privatised to a housing association and through the concerted campaign tenants defeated that and so Birmingham still has council housing which it wouldn't have had otherwise. I mean it, it has made a difference. Um, we organised the tenants at the heart of it, we consciously organised to involve tenants, trade unions, politicians who agree with us that we need to stop privatisation and invest in council housing. Um, because we think this is not just a fight for existing tenants. Obviously, you would expect that the people who live in a house will fight for it. Um, but just like we don't wait for sick people to attend the health service, council housing, from our point of view, is part of an alternative to the kind of madness that's going on out there. And in the 1970s, one in three people in Britain lived in a council house. It's not even in people's memory that there is an alternative way of providing good quality housing. And when you get on to some of the things like energy efficiency and environmental uh, questions, then, you know, a way, you know, there are parts of Britain where council housing is all being fixed to solar panels in order to make it more efficient. There are things we can do with publicly owned collective housing that you can't, it's very difficult to do uh, with individual only occupation. Um, but lately, as well as fighting against privatisation, we've also been forced into campaigning to defend the core principles of uh, rents that people can afford, secure tenancies, fighting against bedroom tax, fighting against some of the things that you, you know that this government has introduced. Um, and you know, there's lots of campaigning going on about that, but the the biggest and most obvious one is the bedroom tax campaign where we help link up. So Defend Council Housing invited a whole lot of other tenants groups and uh, stable people's organisations and trade unions and others to sit around the table and work out how we were going to link up to create a campaign that would fight against the bedroom tax and the other tax on benefits. And to our mind, um, a new new generations of people are getting stuck in on housing, and that is if you like the best thing that we have going for us. Not, I mean, the Radical Housing Network, the union groups, and private rental groups are coming into existence, but also the big tenant groups organising around the bedroom tax we've never fought before. Um, so there's a new generation and there's a new fight, and the question really is. How do we all put our shoulders collectively to winning some ground? Now, we are not, we've always said, council housing is not the only answer, but it is part of the answer. Um, and what we're interested in doing, I mean, you know, we know the market, market not only is failing to provide the housing that we need now, but actually the mar private mar housing market has never provided the housing that we need. That's how the big fight going back to. 
19 when there was a big rent strike in Glasgow and trade unions came out and strike in support of that rent strike against uh, rationalism and push, forcing up rent during the war. Um, that rent strike spread and that's how we won the principle of rent control and sold rent housing. And similarly, you know, in, after the, the Second World War, it was a mass action to swap the ex-army camps and other empty housing that let the force the government to address the question of building council housing. All of this stuff that we did win came out of direct struggle. Um, squatters, as we were just talking about, in the break. Lots of housing that was now housing co uh, council housing in Hamlin, Islington, Tower Hamlet was, was won because we could squatter them. Um, so it's like this is our, this is how we got to where we are, and I think one of the things we want to propose is the same council housing is that we work towards some kind of, well, we're calling it a tenant manifesto, and we've got a draft which we've put around various people, but what we're really trying to do is we need some common ground around, for example, that councils not only need to build council housing and have the funding to do it, but they also need to. We need to have regulation of private renting and we need to set standards. Um, councils need power and resources to do that. And if that private landlords don't meet that standard, then councils have the power to take it over, bring it up to a good standard and let it council housing. We've got some ways that we can find common ground, um, and that's what, partly what we 